joining us. Um, again, please feel free to use that chat. Feel free to throw any questions in there. Um, we'll have a bit of a Q&A at the end of the session. So we'll start looking at questions and we'll answer all of those at the end. So definitely use that chat to your advantage. Um, but I think Kevin's gonna kick us off and then we'll kind of dive into everything. So I'll pass it over to Kevin. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Kevin Stockbridge. So good to have all of you here. Uh, this is, room is full and I couldn't be happier. So I am the director of LGBTQ Pride and Achievement here at Chapman. Uh, and it is really awesome to have uh, this beautiful group. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, a word of opening from Dr. Uh, Reg Chen Stewart, who is also here, and he is our Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Kevin. Uh, can you hear me okay? Can everyone hear me all right? Brilliant. So uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, families, wherever you are uh, Zooming in from, we are super excited that you are considering uh, Chapman University to further your education. So once you get on campus, all the students call me Dr. Reg, and I have the privilege of serving as the VP for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So what does that mean? That means I get to work with all of these talented people on the Zoom call to support you as you pursue your degree at Chapman. I'm a very proud first-generation college student, and I know that this is a very, very sort of exciting but yet stressful time, because just like most of the parents on this call, I have a senior in high school right now, and we're busy filling out applications and trying to figure this all out. So I stand in solidarity with every parent on this call. What I'd ask you to do is pay very close attention to the presenters, uh, ask questions in the chat. We'll try to keep up with the chat. And if uh, any question that we couldn't answer on this call, we'll follow up with you to make sure that you get everything that you want to know about Chapman University addressed. So I'll turn it back over to everyone. We are very proud and happy for you to be here. Let's get started. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. I'm going to kick us off. So um, my name is Steele Viveret. I'm one of our undergraduate admission counselors here at Chapman. I'm going to get us started with a little bit of just overall admission information to hopefully answer any questions ahead of time and give you a sense of what the process is going to look like moving forward. Um, then we'll also hear a little bit more from the Office of DEI. Kevin will go into a lot of our different programs that we offer on campus. Um, and then we will have an opportunity to hear from some current students, hear about their experiences, ask them all the questions you have. So definitely start thinking of those questions. And again, feel free to use the chat as well as we go through. Um, so to kick us off, just to give you a little bit of an overview of Chapman, um, hopefully since you guys are here, you already know a little bit about us, um, but we are a small-ish, I like to say we're schmedium now, we're getting in that kind of middle range, the Goldilocks size, I like to say, where it's just the right um, kind of in-between size between big and small universities, around 8,000 undergraduate students. So the kind of place where you're going to see familiar faces but you're not gonna know everyone. So you definitely get that personalized attention, but also there's so many different people to meet, people coming from all different perspectives and backgrounds. So we actually have all 50 states represented, which I'm really excited about. West Virginia was our last one. So now hopefully you will meet someone from every state while you're here at Chapman. Um, we also have 83 different countries represented. So you will meet a lot of people from all different backgrounds, which is really exciting. And I think that's something that makes our campus really special. Um, it is definitely that smaller feel in terms of the classroom. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. So you have a lot of personalized support in the classroom. It's very easy to ask your professors questions. It's very easy to be engaged in classes, go to those office hours, get involved with research if you want. There's so many opportunities for you to take advantage of. And I think that's something that our size really plays into. So you're able to get a lot of that attention, which I loved in my um, Chapman experience. I'm also an alum. So I Graduated a few years ago, I studied political science and global communication, two of our many amazing programs. Um, so you have a lot of support here and I can vouch for that firsthand. Um, to give you a little bit of a sense of what our application pool looks like and what that process looks like, um, last year we had just over 16,000 undergraduate applications. So a pretty solid pool. Our average GPA was about a 3.87, that is weighted. Um, and we also are completely test optional now. So you do not have to submit test scores if you don't want to. About 75% of our class last year did not submit test scores. So if that is not your strength, that is totally okay. I will never bat an eye twice if I read an application without a test score. So there's no pressure there. But if you feel like it's a good way to advocate for yourself, by all means, please submit it. Um, about 21% of our students are first-generation college students. 
And we have a lot of awesome support programs for those students. About 48% of our students are students of color. Um, and in our application pool, just last year, we had 46 states represented. So we are continuing to pull students from all across the nation, which is really exciting. Um, a little bit of kind of insight into what we're looking for when we're reviewing an application. Um, there's a lot of different pieces that go into it. So we very much review holistically. We don't have any GPA cutoffs or GPA benchmarks or anything like that. Um, so we will look at your academics in context. I really like to emphasize that in context piece because we will look at your school and your environment and what you're being offered, what you're able to take advantage of, all of that gets taken into consideration. So we wanna make sure that we're balancing our admission decision based off of the resources you had access to and what you took advantage of while you were a student. So we will look at that context, which is something I really like students to keep in mind. Another piece of that is that area of study component too, because as we're reviewing your academics, we're also gonna be looking at what you chose as your major, what you wanna study at Chapman. So if you're applying in for a math major, for example, we'll look a little closer at that math level, make sure that you're there and that you're doing well in those classes because we wanna make sure you're gonna succeed here. So keep that in mind as well, that we will look at those specific area of study classes. Um, the community impact piece is huge. Um, I will say that's probably one of my favorite pieces to look at when I'm reviewing an application because it gives me a lot of good insight into who you are um, and what you're passionate about. It looks very different student to student. So tell us about all the different clubs that you're a part of, all the different ways that you contribute to society and your community and your family. There are so many different levels of that contribution and we wanna know all of it. So sometimes students don't have the time to participate in a bunch of clubs because maybe you're helping your younger sibling after school every day or you're helping take care of a family member. Those things are just as important as being an athlete after school. Um, so we wanna see every involvement, everything that you're passionate about. I always say more information is better. So tell us everything. Um, and then that Chapman Fit piece as well. We wanna make sure that we have the resources for you to thrive here. Um, we wanna make sure we have things that you're interested in. So doing a little bit of research goes a super long way. Peek on the website, find clubs that you're interested in or involvements or classes that look really cool to you and talk about those in your application so that we know that one, you've taken the time to get to know us and that you're really genuinely interested in us um, and that we have those things that you'll be interested in that will make you happy on campus. Um, those are really important. Um, so keep that in mind. And our students will also talk about a lot of the involvements that they're a part of. Um, so especially coming from this identity and being an LGBTQ plus identifying student or an ally, there's a lot of involvements for you to get um, involved in and take part in. And we want to know about those things. We want to know what you're interested in. Um, so definitely pay attention to the students as they talk about their experiences as well, because hopefully that will inspire you a little bit and give you some ideas of what you could get involved in here as a student as well. Um, that was just a little bit of insight in the admission world, just to give you an overview, give you a little foundation so that hopefully you can start thinking about moving forward in the application process. Um, if you have any questions, I'm always here. So please, please reach out to me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our amazing Dr. Kevin Stockridge, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about our world of DEI and some of the resources that are available to you here. Thank you, Steele. Um, uh, my office is situated in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at Chapman. Uh, and our a little bit about our office, we serve the entire university, so we support the thriving of all of our Panthers, supporting all the communities that make up who we are as a Chapman family. And uh, it makes us really excited to work with all of you um, as you are thinking about your next step. Um, and hopefully, and considering Chapman and maybe saying hi to us in person uh, in a bit in the future. So as we um, are structured here in the DEI office, uh, we, as I said, serve all communities, um, but we have some focal areas. Uh, we had an opportunity to hear from Dr. Reg, who is our vice president of DEI. Uh, also on this call is uh, Dr. Uh, Gabby Castaneda, who is our assistant vice president for DEI and also the director of Hispanic Latinx Achievement. Hi, Dr. Gabby. Uh, I serve as director of LGBTQ Pride and Achievement. Uh, Misty Levingston is the director of Black Excellence and Achievement. We also have a cross-cultural center 
Uh, and the executive director of the Cross Cultural Center is uh, Araceli Martinez, and she also oversees the first generation programs. And Athena Cuevas is the assistant director for Promising Futures and First Generation programs. So we have a very big first gen program here as well. And Christine Victorine is our executive assistant who makes everything flow and, and uh, possible here. Uh, there's lots of information about what we do in supporting uh, the university here. Uh, we bring, uh, we share key events. We are educating the university uh, as a whole. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like from my own office. And we are very aware uh, Chapman is about personalized education. And as, as human persons, we live at the intersection of many different uh, communities. And so we are intentionally intersectional in our work. So everything that I want to share today is to also acknowledge that many of these things, events, and su support and resources are, are done at the intersection of multiple communities, realizing that you are who you are as you come here, and that is the beauty that we want to support. Um, I myself am a Panther. I am an alum, uh, and uh, like Steele said, I can, I can vouch for... Uh, the things that I'm saying from a student perspective. Uh, so it's really exciting to uh, perhaps have you all uh, on this campus. So a little about, um, <clears throat> this is a really big picture of me. I'm going to say it. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to say it because it's just a big picture of me and I did not intend it to be, but there it is. So uh, a little bit about what uh, my office does. Um, I'm here to support LGBTQ thriving, uh, and I do it through community-focused programs, through education, community connections, and professional ex expertise. So what does that mean? Just yesterday, we held uh, the Trans Day of Remembrance, for example, at, when it comes to focus pro programs, um, and we had a candle lighting vigil here on campus. Uh, even though Trans Day of Remembrance is on Monday, there are no classes on Monday, so we celebrated it uh, a week early. Uh, we also have events like the kickoff LGBTQ History Month. We're not in session uh, for, we're not in normal session during Jude when Pride kind of kicks off across the country for the most part. And so we really take time to celebrate LGBTQ History Month as a moment of, as a time of pride here. There's lots of vi visibility celebrations, for example, by visibility uh, celebrations and programs, um, ACE Week. Uh, and we also have events like Queer Prom, the Queer Fall Feast, which will be happening actually tomorrow, which is a Thanksgiving feast with Chosen Family. And at the end of the year, we celebrate uh, our Lavender graduation. And we have affinity graduations for uh, many communities, and this this happens to be one of them. So it's a celebration from the day you come in to the day you launch into the world. Uh, around education, also doing work to uh, provide safe space trainings uh, for our faculty and staff so that they are key and well-informed allies to our LGBTQ community uh, and providing other presentations as needed. We are, I'm here to help be the hub of connection between us and uh, our community. So we are in contact and working closely with LGBTQ centers in Orange County, in San Diego, in the IE, and the biggest one in the nation, which is Los Angeles, just in our backyard. Uh, we also get information across the board to people here on campus. And then uh, my work is also to support thriving through looking at policies and practices, especially as they um, uh, affect our LGBTQ community. So a little bit uh, about information that we have LGBTQ inclusive policies and practices. Since this is Trans Awareness Month, uh, really being aware of that we are a campus 
that seeks to be inclusive around gender. Uh, there are gender diverse housing options for uh, students. We have uh, gender inclusive athletic participation, locker rooms. There are, there are policies and uh, practices to facilitate name changes. So if, if a student has, is changing their name, um, perhaps as a part of transition, uh, there is a way to do that and ensure that uh, one's name is what appears for faculty uh, and for staff and for others as, for example, you're sending an email, we're able to make those changes and that's a, a key part of our policies. We have inclusive uh, bathrooms uh, across campus and you can find a map of those on the LGBTQIA student website. We have very supportive and trained student psychological counseling. And on our Rinker campus, which happens to be in Irvine, we have vocal therapy. So if someone is uh, transitioning and they want to attune the pitch of their voice, uh, they can do that through vocal therapy in the Rinker campus. So really trying and being a place uh, of inclusion. There's lots more information about uh, resources that we have, including faculty who are key allies in each of the colleges and departments that you can find on the LGBTQIA student website, and there's a QR code here. Something you may be thinking about, what about, are there clubs? What about community? We do have uh, student groups. We have uh, QT POC, the Ch Queer Trans People of Color Collective and QSA, the Queer Student Alliance, uh, both two of our, I think, most significant organizations, so our largest organizations. We have a national chapter of OSTEM, which is out in STEM fields. We have Outlaw, which is a law school um, organization, and I love that name. Shift Happens, which is an organization specifically uh, supporting students who are transitioning, gender non-binary, um, trans, and allies. Disciples on Campus is a, a religious group that is open and affirming. Uh, and then Q Spirit is our uh, support, uh, support group as people try to find that intersection around their own spirituality and their LGBTQIA identity. Just a little bit, I'm just going to touch very briefly on uh, how academics and LGBTQIA identities uh, intersect here on campus. So two major minors that I want to acknowledge are, one, we do have an LGBTQ studies minor. So this is cross-disciplinary. There are courses across many colleges that go towards this minor. We've had it for over 20 years. So it's well established. It's a 21 credit minor, and anyone uh, can add this minor onto their, uh, in it, along with their major. Uh, and three courses are required: the Intro to LGBTQ Studies, uh, LGBTQ Issues in Education, and uh, Lesbian, uh, Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Psychology. If you'd like to know more about that, you can find information on the website or write Dr. Uh, Joshua Leoshenko. We also have a women and gender studies minor, uh, which is also inter interdisciplinary and really looks at gender uh, at the axis of race, class, sexuality, and power. It's 21 credits. Also, you can add this to any one of your majors, uh, and it requires the intro to women and gender studies and women and gender a winter and women and gender studies seminar uh, and you can you can take these independent of the minor if it's something that you're interested in or make them part of a minor finally uh, the library has a lot of resources sometimes you know, can I come and study and and find myself in uh, the stuff that I'm studying at our library has a library guide with a bunch of information that is very useful. We have 
uh, several journals. And finally, if you're thinking about studying abroad, studying abroad programs are thinking about you as an LGBTQ student. And so there are a lot of um, resources and information that you can find about things you might consider as an LGBTQ student as you go abroad uh, and ways to support that. Amazing. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so now we are going to transition over into our student Q&A. So hopefully you've been brewing up some questions. Um, we have some amazing student panelists who are going to chat with you a little bit about their experiences as a Chapman student. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. So if we can start with all of our students, if you want to give us your name, um, pronouns, major, um, maybe where you're from, um, and then any involvements that you have on campus. Um, and I'll let DJ start off because he's the first one I see. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Hi guys, I'm DJ. I'm a sophomore. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, I am a strategic and corporate communications major. And I am, did I say I'm a sophomore? Yeah, I, I think I did. Um, <laughs> so I'm involved in the social fraternity, Phi Kappa Ta. Um, and yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about like, um, like, uh, like acceptance of like different cultures and like stuff like that later on. But like that is a huge like uh, queer space that I utilize on the daily. And I have a, f a ton of members that are like in the same boat as me. So yeah, I can talk a little bit about that if you guys want to hear about that. But yeah, that's, that's me. Thanks, DJ. Um, Missy, do you want to go next? Yeah, totally. Hi, my name is Missy. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a psychology and sociology double major with an honors minor. I'm also in a social sorority on campus, Kappa Alpha Theta, so I can also talk about that from my perspective. I'm also involved in a lab on campus, and I do a lot of research on campus, so those are some of my main involvements. Thanks, Missy. And then last but not least, the amazing Danny Sharkey. Hello. Yeah. Oh, so exciting. Hi guys, I'm Danny. I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior um, here at Chapman. I am an animation major with a minor in educational studies and I'm super involved around campus. I'm obviously part of like the animation association, women in animation. I'm involved with Jewish life here on campus um, as well as I am president of Dungeons and Dragons Club. So I don't know if any of you guys are interested in that. I could just turn this into a Dungeons and Dragons presentation if given this chance. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit general, um, but I'd love to hear from all of you. Um, what LGBTQ plus related um, involvements or events have you taken part of, part taken part in during your time at Chapman? Um, and how have they helped facilitate your experience or add to your experience? Um, we can go in the same order that we introduced ourselves. So DJ, if you want to start. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm in a social fraternity, um, and that has really been, like, an amazing space where I can just, like, be myself and, like, fully accept who I am, and also have people like me, um, participate in those kinds of things alongside me, so, um, I've mainly been doing that, I haven't done a lot of other stuff on campus, um, but that has really helped me, like, feel safe and secure with my person and, like, who I am as an individual, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a very similar experience in my sorority. Everyone's been very accepting of me, and I found a lot of like-minded people like me. I'm also involved in research on campus that has allowed me to look into queer life in college students and, like, accessibility to resources on campus and stuff like that. So that's really affirmed my feeling in myself and also just finding a comfortable space for college students on campus. Uh, and I was also an OL this past year, and I was able to take place in the LGBTQ plus panel. And that was a great way to share resources with everybody, uh, share spaces in the community outside of campus, like throughout the circle and everything like that. And that's just allowed me to feel very welcomed and hopefully welcome other people onto our campus. Yeah, and then for me, I was really fortunate to just you know, by the nature of my major, my, my major in the animation industry in general, you could say any animation meeting club is also an LGBTQIA kind of club gathering. Um, but I almost want to use this, another big experience for me. I know somebody in the chat had asked about LGBTQ housing on campus. That was a big experience for me. Um, my sophomore year, one of my best friends I wanted to room with was transitioning and we needed to request gender inclusive housing um, for us and our roommates. 
And the process was so easy. We sent one email that we were all CC'd on to the residence life department. And we said, hey, we would like to be roommates and we we're requesting gender inclusive housing. And they said, okay, sounds good. And that was it. And it led to just a really easy sophomore year, like not having to worry about any of that. No one questioned it. No one drilled us on it. And it really made my roommate just feel comfortable and have a kind of easy living experience on campus. Amazing. Thank you, Danny. And while we have you, I see that there's also a question about the Women in Animation Club. Um, so can you speak to that if that is inclusive of non-conforming people? Oh, absolutely. I was actually just about to answer that in the chat as well. Yes, Women in Animation is so awesome. Women in Animation itself is a national organization, and then we have the Chapman chapter, but especially, I mean, both on a national level and especially here at Chapman, it is absolutely open to everybody. Um, it is just an additional set of resources to connect people interested in animation um, and those who maybe have never had their voices represented in animation as often as the majority of people do. And it's overall such a cool club, highly recommend it. Amazing, thank you. Um, the next question honestly kind of beat me to the punch with the question I had prepared anyway, so we'll go to that. Um, but what kind of opportunities are there for you to get involved with the LGBTQ plus community on campus? Um, and have you been able to build a sense of community um, or participate in activism at all? You can go reverse order this time to switch it up if you want to start, Danny. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, ooh. So yeah, I know usually the biggest one at first just is the clubs we think of, um, but I had a really good experience of getting involved um, through my classes. With my education minor, I ended up taking the LGBTQ issues and education class, and it was such a cool way to connect with tons of other LGBTQ students on campus. There were some students just taking that class for a random elective and had had no prior connection to any queer communities on campus, and so to finally kind of break out of just talking with, you know, my friend group. Um, it was so amazing. And the final project for that class was a group project where we actually had to participate and start some kind of active project on campus to help support the queer community on campus. And so my group, we did research. We examined, you know, why LGBT, there's more out LGBT students in the humanities and arts versus STEM and business, you know, why is that? Anything we can do to help improve that in higher education. And so being able to actually have an impact to the school and to LGBTQ culture at school through a class was such like a cool way of being like, oh, like Chapman has this ingrained into its academics. Yeah, I actually had a very similar experience as in one of my classes. I took a CK's uh, Women in Arts class, and we were able to talk about LGBT, LGBTQ plus issues there, and we had to decide an art project based off of that. So that's something that I found really interesting in terms of activism. Uh, but I also just feel like the queer community on Chapman's campus is very close, and everyone kind of gabs with each other, and you get to know each other, and you also give each other a lot of opportunities. So I hear a lot about opportunities for activism, jobs, scholarships, and stuff like that through just other people I've met on campus. And Dr. Stockbridge is also great at giving you those resources, um, but everyone talks all the time. And I feel like it's just a great way to get those opportunities out there. Another opportunity like through OSTEM, uh, they have a national conference that happened this past weekend in Anaheim uh, where some of our students went to present their research. And again, it's just for queer people to share their activities and everything they've been researching. So I think there's a lot of great opportunities, but it all kind of comes full circle when everyone talks with each other. <clears throat> um, yeah, kind of similar to what Danny was saying, a lot of my involvement has come through my classes. Um, so, for example, my freshman year fall, I took an African-American rhetoric class. And in that class, we talked a lot about like how black culture and queer culture kind of like intersects and how that's influenced in the media. And we actually got to like write a paper about um, like any topic we could choose from. And I chose to write more about that because I feel like like getting to learn about my culture and like how it intersects in different ways can like it like it's, it was really empowering for me to like kind of learn about that and like with the lens of media on top of it um but yeah like there's also like a ton of clubs and like a ton of my queer friends are all like we all like hang out on like the regular so it's like it's just a really cool space to like i don't know like feel safe so yeah thank you guys um there's a lot of good questions in the chat so i'm glad that you guys are asking so keep it up um, has anyone had any experience with um, clubs or groups 
um, for the ASPEC community on campus? This might, might also be a good question for you, Kevin, um, but any insight there from anyone? I might add, just as someone who identifies on the ACE spectrum, um, it's interesting. I I I want to be very honest. We don't have a designated ACE spec club. Um, I've considered starting one here at my time at Chapman, and I just kind of got overwhelmed and busy. But from discussing with, I have roommates who are in like the cutie pot group, and they are absolutely open and accepting. That was actually my freshman year. I was almost like scared to go to any LGBTQ plus student panels or groups because I'm like, oh, I'm asexuality. That doesn't that doesn't count. Um, and now that I can say as a senior, it absolutely does count here and the amount of support and that like I haven't gotten any backlash from any of the other LGBTQ students I've talked to with about this. And it's been really nice and accepting from them. And yeah, yeah that's that's all I have to add to that. I appreciate you sharing that, Annie. Kevin, anything to add? Yeah, I'm, uh, I might add that I, I would agree exactly with what Danny was saying as as far as like um, QT POC, uh, QSA, uh, and I think probably all the student orgs are are very accepting. It's a very accepting place to be. We actually have uh, a fairly significant ACE Arrow community uh, across our campus. Um, and so it's... Uh, it, if you're coming onto campus, you would not be like the one <laughs> ace arrow person. Uh, and, and and that includes in our QSA, QT POC, O STEM. Um, I know that that is there and we have a, a rich history actually as a queer community um, uh, across the, the A spectrum uh, of students who are engaged in activism and engaged in um, a lot of work on on campus and a lot of uh, events, including gray sexual, demisexual, demigender, um, and the like. So it's a very welcoming community. Um, there's a few questions about Chapman's Christian history and then also getting involved um, in spiritual spaces that are queer friendly. Um, so have any of you had experiences in terms of queer friendly spiritual spaces or any experiences with um, kind of our Christian history on campus and how that intersects with your LGBTQ plus identities and communities here? I mean, I personally haven't had that many experiences, but I have a lot of friends who had. I feel like the Fish Interfaith Center is a great opportunity and a great place to check out. And it's very queer welcoming just because it allows for so many different religious backgrounds to kind of intersect. Um, but I think there's definitely open conversations on our campus about how spirituality and being queer can go hand in hand. So I don't think it's like, they don't really combat each other in any way. I think on Chapman's campus, we actually encourage those discussions to happen uh, and encourage and allow people to promote both the religious freedom and then also their uh, sexuality. And personally, my favorite um, is I'm part of the Jewish student organization Hillel. And once a month, we do LGBT Jew brunches. <laughs> And it's anyone is welcome, whether you're queer or Jewish or neither or both. And we do brunch and we do crafts and we just talk about the intersection of those identities. And it's so much fun. I absolutely love the presidents of this Jewish student group who are both part of the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community. They do such a good job and the posters they make are very fun for the events. Highly recommend LGBT Jew. Um, yeah, I'll just also add, I, I would mostly utilize the Fish Interfaith Center, um, just because of how many different religious practices you can take over there. Um, but I will say the windows in that building actually, um, when like the light hits them, it like, looks like a rainbow. So I think that's pretty cool. So just wanted to add that. I also feel like I have to shout out Nancy Brink over in the Fish Interfaith Center. She is one of my favorite humans on campus. Um, and just it's a very LGBTQ plus affirming space and she especially has done amazing work in terms of being an advocate for the community um, and its intersection with spirituality here on campus. So um, we have a amazing kind of advocate in her. Um, so it's definitely a very affirming space. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to talk about the surrounding community? 
um, and your experiences in the city of Orange and maybe even Orange County more broadly, um, but how have you found the surrounding community in terms of um, being accepting? Yeah, I mean, I think Orange and Orange County can be a little daunting uh, coming here as a queer student, but honestly, there are a lot of really accepting businesses in the circle. One of the first ways I got involved in the queer community in Orange is from working at a business in the circle that is very proud to have a large queer base working there. And so I feel like there is a lot of surrounding help around Orange, um, but I do recognize that it can be very daunting and sometimes it is a little bit scary and that's something that we kind of just experience as queer individuals. Uh, but overall, we have such a welcoming community on campus and also just outside the surrounding areas that I feel like it is generally a very welcoming place. Anything else yeah. to add to anyone about your experience exploring Orange County as a queer individual? Yeah, I, I would definitely attest to that. Like, there's a lot of cool spaces, like, in the circle and just in the area around that, like, really make me feel accepted. I definitely tend to stay away from a few other places just because of, like, past experience. But there are a lot of cool spaces to utilize just, like, in the surrounding area. So, yeah. I did not mean to go to the question slide. We have plenty more time. <laughs> um, anything else to add? Maybe, Kevin, do you have anything else to add about kind of how we interact with the surrounding community and opportunities for involvement there for students too. Yeah, so we are uh, kind of, I was saying before, connected to the LGBTQ Center in Orange County, which is uh, not in Orange per se, it's actually in the next city over, um, which is in Santa Ana, but it's all in, the, it's all just a large neighborhood, if you will. Um, uh, I moved, when I moved out here to California, I came from Tennessee, from one context to another context. And uh, I think everybody's kind of moving to a, di moves in different ways. Uh, we have a really good working relationship with the city of Orange um, as a university, and we have continued to grow and develop that. Um, as uh, Missy was saying, there are several uh, businesses uh, that are in the circle, which is, you know, just down the street from us, we're basically in the circle here as a, as a university um, that are queer positive and have a strong queer community. And uh, we've been starting to work with them for actual events in the future, uh, and they want to be a part of that. So uh, it is a beautiful place to be, um, I think, queer. Thank you. Um, what are some of everyone's favorite queer events on campus? I, I have one if I could go first. Yeah. Um, what I love is there is a um, one of our theater production groups on campus will put on Rocky Horror Picture Show every year um, in our Irvine Lecture Hall. And that such a fun event. Everyone goes out to see it everyone who wants to act and audition is just so passionate and just so uniquely them and I have a lot of friends who end up being in the show at least for the past couple of years and if if you know Rocky Horror Picture Show then you know um and it's just it's just like a just a genuine celebration of these people who love performing and love themselves and their identity and also a little spooky because it's around Halloween Miss your DJ? I mean, I haven't gotten to go to any specific events, but I've seen a lot of like pictures and stuff from Lavender graduation last year, which I heard went really, really well. And then also queer prom, because it's always just fun to dress up and have a great time. Uh, so I've seen really great like events come from that. Um, yeah, no, I would also say Rocky Horror Picture Show. Just shout out that because my sister actually performed in it and she ate. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Amazing. I'm surprised no one mentioned Drag Brunch. I love Drag Brunch. Did you guys go? Have you yep. been to one? So good. Oh my god. There, there's also, <laughs> there's like a Hamburger Mary's that's down in LA. So good. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> love. Um, it's very cool. We get some of the gals from RuPaul on campus, which is pretty amazing. So if you're a RuPaul fan, you could see some of them, which is crazy. Um, Oh, I really like this question about faculty members. Um, how has your experience been with your faculty members? Have you found that your professors are accepting? Um, and 
are they using your pronouns? How has your experience just overall been with interacting with them and their contributions to the community? I've been very lucky that because I, because I come from a humanities background, people do tend to be very accepting. Um, when I proposed that I want to do queer research to one of my professors, she was more than happy to help me with it and was more than happy to give me the resources for it. I have a lot of trans friends on campus and they've had great experiences when it comes to getting professors to use proper pronouns. And again, going through the name change uh, abilities that we have here at Chapman, I find it to be very accepting. I've heard great feedback from my friends. I feel like overall it's pretty helpful. Yeah, I would say the same, like, within my major of communications, like, um, a lot of people are very, like, good at communicating what they need to, like, function as a human being. So, like, if you have, require different pronouns, then people will most likely accommodate you. So I feel like um, within that major, like, or my major specifically, um, they're very accepting. They also offer a bunch of classes for, like, stuff like that, too. So. Amazing. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned the intersection with um, queer identities and research on campus too, Missy, because that was definitely a big piece of something that I participated in as a student. Um, and it was very easy to just like propose that to a professor and they were all about it. I did it in my political science classes. I did a lot of research about um, queer identities and political activism. Um, and then also in the School of Calm that I was part of, um, in my kind of research group, we focused a lot on like body image. And at First, with my professor, it was very like female focused. I was like, we should expand this and look at sexuality and male identities. And she was super receptive to that. So it's cool being able to really advocate for topics that you're interested in. And professors here, at least in my experience, especially, were always super open to it, which is awesome. Um, has anyone had any experiences with anyone on campus who did not respect your LGBTQ plus identity? Um, and how did Chapman respond to this? Or your community respond to this? Anyone? I mean, I've had one experience, again, not me personally, but something that I experienced in one of my classes with one of my friends is they use, uh, they them pronouns, they're not binary. Uh, and I have had a professor misgender them multiple different times. And that was just something that was very easy to go to the professor and talk to them about, even though they were not the most understanding at first and didn't quite understand what it meant to be non-binary. It was a very big teaching moment and something that I think professors are getting a lot better at as they're getting more training uh, in these sort of subjects. But I think it's just with some people, it is an everyday learning experience. And so I would say that's the only kind of negative experience I've had on campus. Yeah, and I, I can kind of second that in the sense that I'm so, so thankful that Chapman is a campus where at least in my time as a student, there has never been any major displays of protest against LGBTQ events. There has never been anything that's like shaken up the community or that's caused a lot of pushback. And I'm so, so thankful that really the extent of um, any kind of hiccups that we see is just from a, a place of like, like Missy said, like learning or ignorance. And in those cases, it's been very easy to sit down and be like, okay, we gotta go over this again. Yeah, I will also say that in my time of being at Chapman, I have not experienced anything uh, that has like attacked me personally, like whether like I'm a black student or like a queer student, like I don't think I've experienced that firsthand. I have heard of experiences um, and I would just encourage that, you know, like we are a safe campus, like there's like blue light systems on our campus, which like if you do feel safe on campus, use like one of those and some help will be dispatched in a minute. But, you know, like I just, I want like I have never had to experience that, so I won't really like speak much on it because I'm sure there has been people who have and like can definitely speak on that issue firsthand. I also want to just uh, add Chapman's. It's if I don't have any particular instance. Uh, I know as a student, I have not had any. I did not have any um, experience any negativity towards the LGBTQ community. Actually, I came out at Chapman uh, and I, I went from being in uh, conversion therapy when I came into Chapman to proudly coming out by the time I was done with Chapman. And if anything else, it was because of Chapman that I was able to kind of truly be myself. Uh, but one of the responses that Chapman has is, uh, to build the position 
that I'm holding right now as a director for LGBTQ pride and achievement uh, to make sure that not just is, are people not having any of those experiences, but we are assuring that uh, LGBTQ students can actually st strive uh, and thrive. So um, continuing to build more and more structures for that. Thank you guys. Okay, any other questions? We've got a little time left. So definitely throw in anything in the chat. Um, anything at all? If we don't have any others, I wanna turn it back to our students. Just give us final words of advice, encouragement, something you wish you knew. What do you want to leave us all with today? Um, and what do you think um, you wish you had known coming into your Chapman experience, maybe? I always love that question. So whoever wants to start first. I can go, okay. Um, when I was applying to colleges, I was really worried about finding like a space where I can just exist and be myself. Um, so I definitely kept that in mind when I was applying to schools. And then I saw Chapman pop up and I saw that they had a lot of cool spaces for me to utilize. Um, and I had a few of my friends who are involved um, in Greek life. And I was like very adamant about not being involved because I've heard like the stereotypes and like how harmful it can be to some like queer students. Um, but I came out for a rush and I found out that like a lot of queer students were involved. So I like was immediately like, those beliefs I had were squashed. Um, and I ended up like joining a fraternity. Um, but that to me, like, just kind of proved me that you can find a space anywhere you can, like, look. So no matter what, like, crevice or, like, stone you enter in, like, you'll find a space that's meant for you. And that, for me, was Chapman. So, yeah. I mean, I wasn't out before I came to Chapman, and that was a very big fear of mine of just trying to navigate my identity. I wasn't completely sure of myself until I came to Chapman. Um, and for my first year at Chapman, I actually really struggled to find my community just because I wasn't out and not comfortable with myself. Um, but really over my time here, I've been so much happier with myself. I've been able to find myself so much more. So if I could go back and tell my freshman year self something, I would tell myself that there is a community for you everywhere. You're going to have the opportunities to explore yourself. You have the opportunity to be happy. Like there's just so many great experiences waiting in front of you. It's just your chance to explore it. Yeah, and and I, I love that of like finding that community. I think on paper, a lot of folks would come up to me and be like, oh, what's it like Chapman's a small school, you know, don't you ever feel trapped in such a small community? But that is absolutely not true. Even if there's maybe nobody else, you know, like you and your major, I've I felt like in my four years, I have found people that there's there's gonna be somebody who gets me and understands me somewhere on campus. It is it like, yeah, we're a medium sized community, but we are such a diverse community within that group. And there's just always gonna be at least one group of people, whether it's cutie pock, whether it's a fraternity or sorority, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons Club, there's going to be at least one group here that is going to have your back no matter what. Thank you, guys. That is all lovely words of advice. Kevin, any final words of wisdom that you want to leave us with? I'm going to go back to saying uh, and, and echo exactly what these students said. Uh, this is a space of personalized education. This Chapman really is a place where you discover who you are and find community with others. Um, and so as you're as you're looking and exploring um, around uh, as far as your next step, uh, I hope that you consider all the things that were shared here and know that we are looking forward to growing our LGBTQ Panther family. Uh, having you here would be such a gift. And, and that's how we receive each of our students is as a gift to us and to our family as a Panther community. Thank you, Kevin. Um, well, I wanna leave you with this as well. If you need anything at all, we are here for you. Um, this is our entire admission team. So all of you have an assigned admission counselor as you navigate this application process. You have someone who's directly there for you. 
Um, I primarily work with our students from the central coast of California. So if that's you, it could be me. Um, but if not, it could be one of the other amazing faces that you see on your screen right now. Um, so you can find out who your admission counselor is on our website. Um, so definitely reach out to that person if you have any questions. Reach out to Kevin if you have any questions. We are absolutely here for you and we want to help you along this process. I know it can be scary as you navigate everything and figure out where your home is going to be for the next few years of your life. But please, please, please reach out to us. We are here for you. And we're really excited that you came to this today and came to hear our voices and the experience that you can have on our campus. So thank you guys so much for coming. Um, and please, please reach out if you need anything at all. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you all.